Saint Joseph was the guardian of Lord Jesus. He is also the patron and guardian of these children of this institution. St. Joseph's College is a leading Roman Catholic school for boys in Sri Lanka. It was founded in 1896. Its principal goal is to groom men with faith, knowledge and virtue. driven by money and fame. Would there be humans amongst us who would not pursue this? Honestly, I would definitely spend the time I have to develop myself to be in a place that I desire to be. But would you or I ever sacrifice that time to develop another person to take that person to the place that we desire to be in? several generations in these holy grounds. We have with us a silent hymn and this is the story of Maestro Francis D. Almeida. Thank you for being here sir. Thank you very much to Lanjali and your crew for coming all the way here to this beautiful chapel of St. Joseph's College to, to run this interview. Thank you very much. You have been coming to this chapel for over several decades to groom these youngsters. How do you feel about it? I've been coming to this chapel from the year 1997 and twice a week on Thursdays from uh, afternoon 2 o'clock till 5.30 and every Saturday from uh, morning 8 o'clock to 12.30 and uh, if you calculate 
the number of hours I have been in this chapel. It comes to about 14,000 hours. <laughs> and uh, in this school, I think I have created a record of anyone being here for 14,000 hours in this great <laughs> chapel. True. So that it has fond memories. But also, uh, this is a good place to have practices. We start practices out there. Warming up, warming up is done outside, as you would have seen. But we come inside, get the feel of the music. And uh, that gives a fine sensation. And going on for a number of years. What is your experience in grooming the youngsters? You have witnessed the growth of children, the young boys from the age of 10 to 19 plus. What has been this experience and your approach in grooming them in choral music? It's actually, I, my philosophy is that I must come down to their level and be friendly and uh, uh, be very close to them and have a sense of warmth. If you are a warm person, even if you scold them at once or twice a day or rarely, they will, they will not take it amiss. They will take it in the good spirit because after that you can really make up. So the friendship that is established is the foundation on which we can uh, create this great group that goes on for you from year to year. And if you look back in the years, back in your school days, what do you see as different or similar compared to the youngsters who are trained under you now? I, I studied at St. Benedict's College. It was a wonderful place. And the brothers, the Lasal brothers who were there, they in their own way taught us to sing. But before that, in my own family, my father was a musician. He could play the harmony. Mm -hmm. And we used to sing every day at the night prayers, during the night prayers. And that gave us the foundation. And then we used to go to church and listen to the choirs and that helped us. So school days then and school days now is totally different. Because now there is a greater emphasis on regular, proper, well-planned training programs for choirs in our schools. That was never there during our days. How would you see young Almeida? Were you a mischievous child and what was your atmosphere in, at home with your parents and the siblings? That's a good question because I was, I am the fourth in a family of 11 children. And my granny was with me and my father always looked after uh, my cousins. First from his side to my brother and a sister. Thereafter from my mother's side two of my sisters. So it was a very large family. First we were in a very small house and then uh, thereafter when I was about eight years, seven years, we moved down to a bigger house in Kotena by the side of our college and the convent and also the cathedral where there was a lot of music. So uh, childhood days were very pleasant, very happy and we had to look at ourselves. They were unlike the present day. The mother and the father, they, were, they, they didn't have the time to spoon feed. We had to look out after ourselves. Schools also did that. Our parents never came to the school to, at the end of every term. And uh, we looked after ourselves and we grew. But people helped. And then I also went to the seminary, St. Aloysius Seminary. There I got a good grooming in Gregorian, Latin Gregorian chant. That was also there at St. Benedict's College. One thing about St. Benedict's is, I was an altar servant and we had to do all the prayers in Latin. In Nomne Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti Amen, the priest says in Troiba Dal Tarde, we say Addeim Kuileti Dikartu in Tuteva. That we studied at St. Benedict's College. There was a brother called Brother James. Then when he came to the seminary, it was more intense and I learned Gregorian chant at St. Aloysius Seminary, which I left after my O level because my father died suddenly. Came to play football with us, and then within 10 days he was dead. So we had to leave the seminary at work after my whole level. I did my advanced level after I got married and I had a child. And when I went to do the exam, those girls and boys never thought that I was a married person. So that's how we progressed. So those are the school days then. The school days now, the children now have got so many benefits. Their textbooks are so good. They have specialized people to train them in sports and in music, in dance. So our the present day children are very uh, blessed. And they come in their vans, they are taken back uh, home by their parents. So they are much on a much higher level of comfort. It's a complex life that they are Were you mischievous when you were a child? 
Normally, I was not. I was not. I used to always follow the rules. In you know, at Saint Benedict's College Seminary, where I work. But at particular time, I became a rebel. That is later when I was working. I became. I I joined the trade union movement. I became a rebel, and that was different. But I never broke rules. Mischievous, same somewhat, somewhat mischievous. Experience with Mr. Almeida was actually one of the best, I would say. Um, I remember he came to school in 97 or 8, when I was in grade 7 or 8, let's say. And uh, I remember him, uh, we were outside uh, the chapel. He introduced uh, himself as Fanta. So I was like, oh, okay, seems like a funny fellow. Uh, and uh, from that day onwards, um, Things actually uh, went really well because we were singing very um, uh, moderate um, hymns, carols before that and uh, later on he introduced us to classical music and uh, that's where we learned, uh, got into uh, what you call Latin music, sometimes uh, pretty much different different languages. I don't know whether it, how true it was but uh, it made sense to us at that time. So yeah, that was the beginning, let's say. It was a good experience all along and uh, Sir was very kind to us but he stood up more than other people. We've actually, it's because of him we were exposed to uh, singing with other choirs. Before that it was only St. Joseph's you know among us, uh, have, we, have our carols and once he came it was a different thing where that was the first time we met girls also so thanks to Sir. Uh, it was like a strictly boy school back then. He uh, made spice things up, I would say. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed uh, learning uh, Latin music under him. And one of the best things he did was, he actually accepted all the people who were willing to come and sing in the choir because he actually gave that opportunity to people who love to be, love to sing. So let's say somebody was not up to par with their music. So. He had a group of, uh, let's say, 10 or 9 individuals. He called them the Golden Eagles. Now these kids, uh, they were not in their best, uh, what do you say, they weren't able to sing properly. But what he did was, uh, it was his mastermind, I would guess. Uh, he kept them among people who could sing. They were all dispersed in the choir. And few months down the line, what do you know? These guys were singing as well as the others. So, and some people, uh, they, were, they actually did better than the people who were there before. So I guess uh, singing, people might call it a natural talent, but uh, he proved it wrong. As long as you love it, as long as you have it in your heart, then uh, you can get there. Touch your abdominal muscle. You want abdominal muscle. One, two, four, and make it very tight. Mo, mo. Get the sound coming, circulating along that cave and comes out. One, two, three, four. Mo, cave, cave. What were your desires as the young little Francis Almeida? What were you aspiring to become in future? I actually wanted to become a priest because that was my father's intention. I was the first child after, the first boy after three girls. So he said that he wanted me to become a priest. That made me join the seminary. Then after his death I left. So that was, then I wanted to become a lawyer. I didn't become. Then because I was working and I became a coach, basketball coach. So that took all my evening time and I specialized in basketball and I specialized in singing through a priest called Father Kleva Pereira. It was Father Dominic Khandapa who taught me Gregorian chant. Father Kleva Pereira gave me an opening towards choral music and he was a dedicated person. And we, all his extra time he spent on training us and I gathered so much from him. But he's dead and gone. But he did so much for Western classical music, choral music in Sri Lanka.
Was it always your desire to follow music or was it by chance, by a coincidence? That you desire, know? desire. I wanted to become a choral director and I wanted to train people. I wanted to improve my own singing. He had come from Rome. He was a soloist in Propaganda Fide College in Rome. So he gave us all the things that he has learned. He had a fantastic voice and we had this nice group of young boys, say about 24, and we took part in competition, won, and then we went on trips to Candy. We did so many concerts, and that was a great experience. He was a very, unlike me, he was a very quiet type of person. Even when he wanted to uh, reprimand somebody, he was very, he was very soft. Now, we, being a basketball coach, I can scream at somebody. Otherwise, we may lose a match. Within three seconds, you can lose a match. But in this case, he was a priest, very quiet, quiet calm person. You said you're a coach in basketball and a sports scientist. Tell us your role. What was the experience like? I was always a, I was a keen sportsman. And uh, in school, I played soccer and basketball, represented a seminary. Thereafter, I worked in a mercantile firm called CIC. There, I represented the company in mercantile tournaments in athletics, basketball, hockey, and soccer. So I was always, and I, right what I was coaching basketball, even the former Chief Justice of Sri Lanka and the former, the current Navy commander, they're all my, they had been under me one time or, or another. So uh, both went parallel, both went parallel. All, apart from my job, that is a different thing. So what happened was I was able to apply some of the things that I've learned as a sports coach and a scientist in countries like Russia, I was in Moscow, I was in uh, Korea learning basketball, India National Institute of Sports and uh, uh, Thailand, the American coaches came there and trained us and conducted the training program. So and in Canada, CEDA conducted a training program, I became a level 3 coach, a Canadian coach. So now when now, when you think about sports coaching, physical fitness is very important. Physical fitness consists of strength, stamina, speed, and endurance. Now, speed, stamina, uh, strength, and flexibility. Four. So, when you train in those aspects, there, there are a lot of scientific impl implications. Uh, physiology, physiology, anatomy, right? And uh, you have to study those things, biomechanics. So I thought, why not you apply those principles in vocal training? Because singing is a physical activity. It's a physical activity. It's like walking, talking. Talking is also a physical activity. And singing requires a lot of energy. And long notes, you have to sustain strength. And in order to develop strength in singing, it's important that you do physical a training program to develop your strength, including weights, push-ups, pull-ups. So I, by combining, I find, I found that during these last few years, uh, I have uh, taken a quantum leap. That is something beyond, and that is now helping our boys and our girls. I train in uh, conducting, in training them, taking them to a, a real significantly higher level. So physical training side also comes. But I have also, I have, one of my field is also education. So I was working as an uh, education uh, coordinator for ITF London. And they sent me on two scholarships. One is to Australia, Clyde Cameron College. And the other one uh, to Italy, audiovisuals. Audiovisuals in education. So I combine that too. So how can you be a teacher? How can you be an educator? Then one more thing will be interested to know. I was also in the advertising field, communication. So in advertising, they say uh, only 15% is the truth. The rest is all, <laughs> they use a very peculiar word. So these are things. And I was also in the trade union movement, fighting for social justice. Actually, I've gone on demonstrations and the police had hit me and broke my forehead and put me in the cell. So. So I know how to endure toughness, toughness. So all these things have gone, and I was also working in a financial company uh, based in Hong Kong, Continental King Loom Commodities. We start work at five o'clock in the morning. 
and research base, trading in future, involved in futures training. So all these little bit of things here and there has helped me to become an. And I got married, and uh, so far I have two children and one wife. And uh, wife has also been a very keen partner in all my work. Otherwise, I wouldn't have come up to this level. What's her name? She's Krishanti Pereira, mm -hmm. and uh, she's uh, background is microbiology, mm -hmm. medical microbiology. She went on a scholarship on on entomology, medical entomology. She she's very very precise, well organized person. So I'm a little chaotic. So she'll help me to organize myself so that I'm able to do so many things during the course of the day. Certainly a man of all trades, and your wife has been the support, I guess, for you to continue. Yeah, yeah. In the sense, I synthesize, put everything together. So when I do the singing, it's in one way. Then if I do physical training, coaching, I am a national coach. I coach his current uh, Navy commander, and he has acknowledged that fact I have helped him. And so uh, I focus. When I go into these fields, I refocus. Since you mentioned about your children, what are their names and what are they up to now? Since we always know that you're, you're walking into the chapel not alone with your two grandchildren. Grandchildren, yes, right. Now my daughter is Rasha. She, the whole time she'll be ongoing studies. She did a CIM, marketing, then she did Montessori training course, teacher training course. Now she's also teaching. She's also in the Open University and she's married to a chartered accountant and a lawyer. So they all support me. And the, 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 the two grandchildren are her son. My son is not married. He's uh, 36, but he's on his own. He's living with her. I 
senior or experienced Mr. Francis Almeida is, he remembers to remind himself to meditate on one thought as he walks into the Josephian Chapel. And that is to forget his seniority and experience as a choir master. And that is because for each and every child here, it's a new day, although it has been over several decades for him. Working in the choir was one of the best times in my life. Because here, he taught us about uh, brotherhood, how to be nice to people. And when I was talking about these golden eagles, people who couldn't sing, uh, one of the things that you have to get into your mind is, not everybody would be born with a certain amount of gift, but accept them. That's, they might be with different, different cultures, different, different backgrounds. This was a, a nice haven for people to actually grow, feel happy. So. I think people should be like Mr. Almeida rather than being commercialized. It's, co it's okay to be commercialized after a certain point. But until that, especially it's a nice place. Our childhood was nice because of Sir. He made it, uh, he took it to that extent. Because, I mean, it was a happy place. Every Saturday we used to come here around 8.30. He used to do the voice training. So, lovely uh, exposure and experience, I guess. Funny, definitely funny, but when he's serious, he's serious, but he doesn't get offended easily. If you offend him, that, that must mean, you know, you must have done something really bad. But it was a very rare sight. I mean, he will, he'll be very diplomatic, he'll be like, puta, talk to them in a nice manner, you know, treat them nicely, something like that. We are going to sing this for the prize giving, and we are going to sing at Shangri. Mr. Almeida, we spoke about advertising. Tell us a few examples of how your concepts contributed to the industry. 
we were doing advertising for uh, Ceylon Merchant Bank and uh, they wanted a con uh, they wanted people the audience the general audience the idea about merchant bank as opposed to uh, the normal commercial bank so they had other things factoring leasing of course every bank has then uh, syndicate banking number of other subsections so what i did was i got my nieces jigsaw puzzle and then erased the thing and gave each of those factors each of those things that they were handling and then uh, say leasing factoring syndicate banking like that each of the puzzles come then there is a gap no puzzle if it is ceylon merchant sri lanka merchant bank and that comes and that one the gold award it didn't cost us 5000 rupees normally a good that charges 1 and 1/2 million but that year maliban at that we did cost of us about 2 million that all the got a very sophisticated that but simple idea simple things can carry a long way so a simple ad can also pull need not be very complicated because when you complicate things the essence is lost so one thing that i learned from the advertising and the communication field is that if your message is given in a very simple way straight forward way uh, there can be benefit but you must also remember classical music is very complicated and that also has its benefit the simplicity versus complex i was very lucky to have uh, come and collaborated with a person called premnath j morais he was involved with the hollywood Hollywood, uh, hollywood film production he was a great sports editor a uh, uh, complex personality so he was a creative director and i became a group general manager all the uh, he worked under me i always kept him right on top and i learned uh, so much from him and he was one person who was uh, very precise and very uh, punctual uh, any work that you give him he gives the final product in no time if it's a film script or anything like that or a tv advertisement or a newspaper ad, ad before the person after the briefing the person goes down to have lunch and come back he has it ready so such prompt uh, action is what i learned from him then there was a person called jesus dasani another advertising agency he was also very uh, very kind kind but also strict and uh, very friendly person he used to get and he always cared for the people who worked under him and uh, made sure that they were well looked after so those are the two people in the advertising field and uh, yeah, advertising is a very challenging thing and i learned so much from them and in my accounts I, and at cic i was at cic 15 years i did accounts there was a person called jc fernando he studied in india he had a degree from an indian university i learned from him to be very precise to be very methodical those are some of the personalities that helped me with this wealth of exposure that you have gained from all aspects that you have brought together so in putting this together what have you come to present with putting all these things you putting everything together you come to that uh, irresistible conclusion there is so much more to learn so much more to learn and to research and to investigate and to develop your thesis right now i'm trying to write a thesis uh, based on the application of physical training methodology and scientific principle in vocal pedagogy there are three things one is the physical training methodology how does the body uh, sort of made to uh, work at an optimum level even singing of course in running so i get my boys to run 800 meters before practice starts and then they will do stretch exercises so that is they'll gain speed and they'll do push ups to get strength stretch exercises and breathing like and breathing cadence the timing in breathing so those things that's a big section that i am applying now but i won't i don't have to tell them but if you if i write the thesis you will see there is one full section on that second thing is uh the scientific principle what is sound what is energy what is wave then how does it how does the sound get amplified 
what is uh, what are musical notes what are frequencies how do how, what is the speed of the sound things like that what is the difference between electromagnetic sound and and the normal sound that we have so those things are applied when you learn and also anatomy physiology how does the body work hearing speaking then you go to vocal pedagogy the science of language how how what, what how do sounds get together and form words and how do the words give meaning things like that and what sort of person pedagogy also means the person of the coach so is coaching philosophy and charisma you must have a charisma so that people say all ah, right he is a person whom we can follow so these actually there are five aspects of that i am studying i get up at 4:30 in the morning and start studying research writing i can i like to write so there is somebody to type my thesis mm-hmm. and i am going to make uh, make give it to a university maybe kalam university for a final uh, approval and so those things i apply and there is a, as i mentioned earlier it makes a big difference So my wish for say is long life and um, God's grace for him to be able to give the same opportunities that we were given back then and um, make I mean I hope people would be lucky enough to uh, enjoy what we got under his supervision and guidance not about only about music but about life as well and uh, thank you sir thanks a lot uh it was a pleasure indeed so francis uh, he has been a really good mentor if i tell uh, the truth not even he doesn't coerce direct us but also he has implemented good values and virtues in us to make us good disciplined people because Sigin is something you have to sing with all of your heart. So I think Francis has implemented that uh, that virtue in us. So I'm really grateful for him uh, make us uplift our voices to our God. So I'm really thankful for him. May God bless Francis. you are following your passion and when anyone follows the passion there are always challenges what were your challenges in your path <laughs> challenges every institute institution where you work you face challenges one thing is the management changes first it's very it's very important that you convince them as to what you are doing is the best for their students or those who are in the office and always you come across Uh, certain sections in the management who don't uh, agree with you and so you have to convince and go ahead swim you know against the current and constantly you have got to do that constantly they will say don't do this don't do that but keep doing little by little little by little and then you find from where you were from zero you have come up to 50 then with lot of difficulties lot of opposition normally in these schools and in these institution management 
they can't see, see the way that we see things. And also in, uh, in the general system, established system, they are very mediocre. Things as they were and not go beyond the uh, outside the box. So if you are a person who works up outside the box, who are non-traditional, you will eternally come against uh, problems. So you have got to face it. Sometimes you will have conflicts, sometimes peacefully. So that is how little by little we have come up to this level. If you just went by what they said, the management says, in various fields, various fields, we will be very low. So you have to swim across the corner with a lot of determination, but with a lot of tact to come to the place where you are. Then they will understand, oh, this is what it means. How does music impact another person and what can it do to a community as a whole? What is the most touching music piece that comes to your mind? Uh, I can say from all the music that I have done, Mozart music, certain compositions are beyond description. And uh, you would have heard that one of those voicing, beyond description. But even a simple music can touch your heart and depends on the mood. There are certain music that enhances your feeling regarding about loss, about happiness, about joy, about triumph. So it conveys various uh, sort of uh, feelings. Music, especially choral music, also develops the brain. Now they call Mozart effect. That is, people who do Mozart by piano, by your singing, they say their intelligent level go up. There is greater neuroplasticity. And they have done a lot of tests to prove that. Music also heals. Music can heal. A lot of tests have been done. And uh, that's what they recommend in even in hospital, gentle light music, even in operating theatre, gentle light music that can help reduce tension and uh, enhance the process of uh, recovery quicker or faster. So, music can also develop your memory skills, memory skills, your intellectual capacity and uh, your, your, your way of thinking and way of judging. So, music is a very fine gift that God has given humanity. There are two things young people right now want to have in this world. They are very popular. One is sports and one is music. So, I have been involved in both. So, I know how one helps the other. And music very really... And music can also unite people. Music can also help people to uh, focus on world uh, issues. For example, AIDS problem in Asia, in, in Africa, was enhanced, was... was uh, proclaimed to the world, delivered to the, the message of the people dying of AIDS by Bono, singer Bono, and uh, he and his wife worked, went to uh, Africa, worked among the people, children who were dying, and he was so upset. He, he did a huge concert and then created the awareness of the suffering of those people who were dying, actually dying silently. Then he met various uh, leaders of various countries and then got them to support, fund uh, treatment and prevention of AIDS. And also a lot of singers have got together uh, in their fight against hunger, world hunger. So those are things that music can do. And also there's a spiritual dimension. Um, it brings us closer to your faith. Even if you are a Buddhist, you the chance. If you are a Christian or a Islam, a follower of Islam, all this music has a spiritual dimension that will help you calm down and give purpose to life. What do you try to convey through your musical productions to the community? And what are the international recognition that you have gained and even the titles that the choirs have won? Um, in a way, if you do a concert, then it's a production. If you take part in a religious service, it is an offering. Now, now we belong to an international organization called uh, International Poetry Cantores Federation that, that is based in Switzerland. Their president and vice president came recently and they were amazed at the quality that we have, even as compared to the European choirs. 
We did a Latin, full Latin mass. We did a nice concert here. They were amazed. And they want to come back. They want this year on in April 21st, they want to have a memorial uh, sort of service in different parts of the country in commemoration of the April attack. And on the 19th of April, we are going to do a concert with 2,000 student singers in this complex. So we will be having three practice sessions and then putting together. Now, these large numbers of people have some experience. Year 2000, we had a jubilee concert here. We had about 680. Then a few years later, 2012, we had a Eucharistic rally. We had 720 singers plus we had a band, combined band of 580 in 12 bands. This was 27 schools in the choir. And we put the whole thing together. Then uh, we have been doing, and we have been doing a lot of diploma program, especially Latin. We are trying to revive Latin, which was, which was discarded by the church after the Second Vatican Council. By a mistaken notion of the uh, Second Vatican Council decrease on worship. So we are going to be, we are now reviving and we have succeeded. Now many churches, many schools sing in Latin. And Latin is not a dead language itself, language that is very much alive. For example, coronavirus, corona is crown, virus is poison in Latin. So you, if you, especially if you are doing science and medicine, so I'm teaching Latin here. At the end of the training session, I'll be teaching Latin. So that is going on. In all. From the year 2000 to now, with the support of the church, we may have trained something like 15,000 boys and girls in different parts of the country. And we have deanery level, that is in different parishes, school level, combined schools. And so that has enhanced our quality. And we have also taken part in Asia Pacific competition. And we, in, the, in a sacred category, we competed with the seniors, this college, all adults, and we got a silver, and that was an outstanding. And we have also done extremely well in the Royal Schools of Music exam, advanced choral exam. And uh, those people who come here to judge, they are amazed. And British School for Performing Arts, I have got five scholarships, three Josephians and two girls from uh, St. Lawrence's, three week trip for them, they, they had performed, they had come back, and that type of scholarship gift also we were able to uh, provide for our students. So that's the at the internet. And we also took our teams. We took a group of 93 children to Rome. We sang in front of the Pope. And the Pope told our cardinal that choir is singing well. After the blessing, the choirs can sing. There are two mics on top. So while we were singing, they were they were broadcasting. He sang an Italian chorus, Apenzero, slaves chorus, and the Pope was very much touched. He told, told the, our cardinal, he, they were seated right on top, bellissimo, very beautiful. And he said pronunciation is very good, very good. So, and we also sang in the inside Peter's Basilica, this is outside. We did a Rome concert. We have also done a concert in Jerusalem, holy land, in different places. I took another group. This 93 people combined four schools. Ave Maria, Maristella, Good Shepherd and St. George. Combined people. In three different flights we had. Uh, Holy Land, only our boys. And we performed in front of the Latin Patriarch. And we sang Latin and we were surprised. I have also taken the Stafford International School to Dubai. The Dubai Sangeet Festival. And uh, uh, we performed in the National University of Singapore. That's a highly reputed two concerts we perform and we sang in 10 different languages and in my understanding you perform in different languages learn different languages that also enhances the, your capacity to think and also trying to understand the beauty of different cultures so that is how the international exposure then uh, I've also sung in Lourdes in France in the choir and Russia when I went for a scientific symposium uh, I used to ask some tricky questions from those at this discussion, big plenary session. And then I'll tell you a simple thing. There was a talk on, a lecture on how to prevent and treat injuries, prevent and treat injuries in sports. 
So at the, after a big lecture, I got up and asked, learned professor, how do you prevent injuries in boxing? The whole idea is to injure the other people. <laughs> so I used to ask questions like that and that would create a lot of discussion. They put me on the head table on the final day and uh, each person in the head table can say a few words. So instead of saying something, I sang. I sang an Italian uh, Neapolitan song. So that exposure is there. Uh, Korea. I took a team to Korea, basketball team, girls and boys, and uh, for an international youth championship. And they said, we, we went early. So they said, can you group boys and girls sing a song? We broadcast a huge gala concert, huge. And uh, that we broadcast on Korean TV. So I said, I can train. So we, I trained them to sing with the help of a Korean. Uh, sing a song called Ari Ram. And that's uh, like a national anthem. It's not a national like anthem. And our boys and girls sang backed by the Korean uh, military band. And uh, the Koreans were highly thrilled. Oh, Sri Lanka, sing Ari Ram. Ah, take free, free shops. They just said, no, no money, no money. So that experience also there. Mr. Almeida, you have been through a lot in life and also have achieved so much. But you said it wasn't easy. It was always tough. You were against the challenges. You always swam against the current. We see the youngsters and their lives, what they are blessed with. And there might be certain things that are lacking in their lives as well. What do you think is the advice that they might have to look up to in achieving success in life as a whole? Einstein once said, Imagination and creative, creativity is more important than acquiring knowledge. I mean, most of his theses were based on utter imagination. If you go through his, uh, the, uh, the things that he has propounded to the world, it's all based on imagination. So, imagination is important. Creativity is important. Creativity means you don't do things that you have always done in the same way. Some always find something new, something very interesting. That is one. Two, a, co a trainer, coach has to be a good learner. He has to get up, he has to read, he has to study, he has to do research. You have to learn more than the student. Even the subject that he thinks that he knows and combining other fields to connect them. So a person, you have to have creativity, then you have to be a learner, then mediocrity. Now what happens is people are satisfied with things as they are. They don't go outside the box, go that extra mile to do something new for the society, new for the students. So, and the institution also, where you are working, also are quite happy with the mediocrity. Nine A's, three A's, quite happy. They don't go beyond that. So, we have to teach the children, don't be a mediocre person. Become uh, somebody extraordinary and seek perfection. Just something is better than nothing theory. That's what normally schools expect you to do. Something is better than nothing. No. Seek perfection and go for excellence. And the, the main thing about excellence and perfection, it doesn't have a finish line. Like in a race, 100 meters has a finish line. This doesn't have a finish line. It keeps going like an horizon. So those are some simple things. And always be uh, two other things. You have, be, you have to be a caring person for the society, the poor, the marginalized. Social justice is very important. So whatever you do, you connect it with social justice. And also make people happy through your music, through your sports. And bring the world together. World in Union, that's a song you have heard our boys sing. World in Union. Cross high mountains, cross deep seas, climb high mountains. That should be the theme. So thank you very much for coming it's our all the pleasure. way it's uh, and our pleasure. bringing your crew and having the interview, following our, the way that we were, all the things that we did, step by step, whatever we did. And uh, may you be blessed with more such uh, creative uh, sort of endeavors. Yes, Mr. Almeida. And we thank you so much for sparing your time of this busy schedule in the middle of the practices that are going on. And we certainly gathered a wealth of knowledge with this discussion and certainly the little choristers helped us and everybody, the rector, the vice rector, all of them contributed towards the success of this discussion. We thank you for tuning in.
What's the point of being the best in life and not allowing another person to win for a change? Mr. Francis de Almeida was never seeking for attention. He was a warrior, but in his fight, he made the choice to be quiet and take a step back. In the same way, in everything, always, he was behind the curtain and he listened to the applause and take the bow by the heart. He took the audience seat while he deserved the first place. That is Mr. Francis de Almeida. Are you out of the production? Like and subscribe. How can you hear the laughter? Can you see those eyes spread down stars? Rose, see head and shoulders heads. The victory can be redefined. The end of a new dimension. For convention, it's a action for. Rocking the world and changing the world. Inside of me, it's hard to bear. Still, I dare not to be like them. I swear, I do not care. I do not want to be a part of your warfare. Suffering for peace, proof with gun strikes. Collateral damage done with rights. Nobody seems to raise their voice. Mario Arden, the productions. Perfection. It's not a must. Because errors make things beautiful. Don't let the world shape you to its loss. Remember that being yourself is the key to shape the world. Have the backbone to do the right thing. Be ashamed of being someone who does the same as the others without any reason or logical basis. If you're pure at heart, everything will be revealed to you in a wonderful way. Cheers to those who awaited my downfall and bless those who prayed for me. Never let fame make you forget your purpose. Don't crash. Real talent deserves the right time and the best place to shine. Be the one who's powered by God. Not by drugs. Oh, just when I look back, there's a line inside me.
You're not a slave to me. 